What is up amigos? Today we're talking about what potential flow is and is it really useful because as you'll see, potential flow is a fairly simplified version of regular aerodynamics and fluid mechanics. So some people might think that it's not very useful or we shouldn't really use it for anything, but that's not actually true. There are some very important uses for it. So first of all, what is potential flow? Well, in general aerodynamics and fluid mechanics, we have viscosity. And if you don't know what viscosity is and the difference between an inviscid flow and a viscous flow, check out this video here. So viscosity plays a very important role in aerodynamics and fluid mechanics in general. It gives us things like boundary layers and flow separations. So for example, with the boundary layer, as the flow comes along, we have some friction between the very first particle of air and the wall. Then that slows that particle down to pretty much zero uh, meters per second. And then the next particle up is now being hindered by that other particle because there's some internal friction between the two and that sort of slows that particle down and so on and so forth as we go up. So we get a boundary layer forming. And if you don't know what boundary layers are, check out this video here. So with potential flow, what this means is that we don't have viscosity at all in the flow and we don't have any vorticity. So that means that we don't get boundary layers forming or we can't even get flow separation because flow separation is really a function of the boundary layer and pressure differences. So in reality, if we were to have a potential flow, we wouldn't see anything like this. We'd see more in an airfoil and it doesn't really matter what angle attack it is. The flow will just come up over and meet at the back here. So if we can't model these particular flow phenomena, which do affect the flow a lot in certain situations, is potential flow pointless? Is it, should we use it at all? Well, actually there are some very important ways to use it. One very common way these days that is, is used is to initialize CFD. So when you have a very complex situation, um, your entire flow that you have, let's say you have your entire domain, it's this entire page. Well, you don't really know what is happening in this domain. So when you first start your runs, your simulation, um, there's going to be very high residuals everywhere or most places, and that can result in the simulation crashing straight out of the gates. So by running a potential flow solver first, what this does is you get a general wake forming, sorry, a general pattern forming. So you might know generally about how fast the flow is moving over the airfoil, the kind of wake kind of um, vorticity field and uh, um, velocity field, sorry. So then you can feed that in to your regular CFD, which has viscosity, and start from that phase. So you have some information about the flow, which is not entirely accurate, but it is good enough to make the flow more stable. And it's important to understand that when it comes to a real application of aerodynamics and fluid mechanics and really anything in, in science, any application, it's not really about whether something is accurate or not, it's about how accurate it is. It's more a gradation than anything. So having something that is very accurate is obviously better, but you can't have something that is 100% accurate. So it's really about how accurate this is and whether we can use it. So one aspect that we do use is, um, as I mentioned, the um, initialization for CFD. But there is another way that we use potential flow a lot, and that is in something called panel methods or vortex panel methods or vortex methods. They go by all these different names. So what this is, is effectively an inviscid solver, and you can put an airfoil or any shape you like really uh, in the flow and the flow comes over it. And then you can actually predict the lift quite accurately and also the induced drag. So if you don't know what the induced drag is, check out this video here. And that is a very powerful tool because literally without having to do anything really complicated because potential flow solvers are like panel methods are very quick to run a simulation takes seconds, if not less sometimes. So you can optimize your general plan form or your general object to maximize or minimize lift or induce drag, whatever you are looking at very quickly, and then feed that into the next step in your design process. So this is a very good first step, first approximation to get an idea as to what, what design you should really have. If you want to then look at uh, viscous effects, such as the skin friction drag and the pressure drag that comes about, for example, in the wake, or well, then you need to move to a more uh, advanced solver. For example, you can go to a regular Navier-Stokes, CFD RANS, VRANS, whatever, or you can couple a viscous, a viscous um, equation to the potential flow and then run it from there, but that's more advanced. Generally speaking, using panel methods and potential flow to predict the lift over an object is very common to do, especially as a first step. And that is also another use for potential flow. 
So potential flow is not useless. It has very good um, properties to use as initial steps and really helps us design things much quicker and much more cheaply. So if you've ever looked at panel methods or vortex lattice methods, check them out. And that is the end of this video. So if you like this video, make sure to like and click the subscribe button and I'll see you soon. Peace amigos.